Flash loans allow you to borrow tokens that are worth millions of dollars as long as you pay it back in the same transaction. How crazy is that? But DeFi gets crazier with Flash Mint. Flash Mint allows you to create tokens that are worth millions and billions of dollars. And at the end of the transaction, those tokens will be destroyed. In this video, we'll take a look at Flash Mint. What is it? How is it used? And I'll show you a code example in WEF. Let's get started. First of all, I'm going to explain how a Flash Mintable token works. For this example, we'll use a Flash Mint enabled WEF, and I named it FWIF. So there are two ways to mint this FWIF. The first way is you send ETH and you get the same exact amount of F with. You can hold on to this F with, and when you want to withdraw your ETH, you would return the F with, that F with gets destroyed, and you get back your ETH back. So that's the first way of minting and burning F with. The second way of minting F with is by Flash Mint. Unlike the first way of minting F with, here the F with will be destroyed after the transaction. So you would mint F with out of thin air without any deposit of ETH. Once you get the F with, you can do other stuff with it. And at the end of this transaction, this F with will be burnt. So that is how Flash Mint works. Let's now take a look at how it can be used. I'll show you how to do an arbitrage using Flash Loan. And then I'll show you how to do an arbitrage using Flash Mint. Let's say that on exchange A, one ETH is trading for 1,200 DAI, and on exchange B, one ETH is trading for 1,000 DAI. Now to make some profit, I would want to buy cheap and sell high. So how would I do this? On exchange A, one ETH will get me 1,200 DAI. For the same amount of ETH on exchange B, I will get 1,000 DAI. So this means that DAI is cheaper on exchange A compared to exchange B. For the same amount of ETH, I get more DAI on exchange A than exchange B. So the strategy here is to buy DAI from exchange A and then sell it on exchange B and I will get some profit. Let's see how it's done using a flash loan. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get a flash loan and borrow 10 ETH. I take this 10 ETH over to exchange A and then buy DAI. I take this DAI over to exchange B and buy back ETH. I borrowed 10 ETH and I got back 12 ETH. Repay the 10 ETH that I borrowed and my profit is 2 ETH. So that is basically how arbitrage works using Flash Loan. Let's now replace this Flash Loan with Flash Mint and see how an arbitrage works using Flash Mint. Here is the setup. Instead of a flash loan contract, here we have a flash mintable token. Notice that there is 0 F with and 0 ETH inside this contract. On exchange A, there is 0 ETH. However, this exchange also accepts F with. 1 F with will be trading for 1 ETH. Okay, so let's see how we would do our arbitrage using flash mint. First, I will flash mint F with. Send it over to exchange A and then get back DAI in return. Although this exchange had 0 ETH, because this exchange accepts F with, we were able to exchange DAI for F with. So now we take this DAI and take it over to exchange B, buy the ETH for DAI. Now at the end of this transaction, the 10 F with that we minted will be destroyed. However, we don't own any F with to destroy because we gave it over to exchange A. Exchange A owns this 10 F with, but we don't owe any F with. So in order for this transaction to be successful, we would need to mint another 10 F with, so that by the time the transaction completes, that 10 F with will be burned, and the transaction will complete. So we send the 10 ETH back to the F with, and this will mint another 10 F with. So now the F with contract has 10 ETH, Exchange A has 10 F with, we have 2 ETH in profit, and another 10 F with. At the end of the transaction, the 10 F with that we minted in the beginning of the transaction will be burnt, and we are left with 2 ETH profit, and Exchange A has 10 F with, which is backed by 10 ETH inside the F with contract. That is how Flash Mint is used in the arbitrage. 
we were able to mint tokens out of thin air in order to do an arbitrage. In other words, we were able to do an arbitrage even though both the FWIF contract and Exchange A had zero liquidity for ETH. Let's now take a look at how to do Flash Mint using WEF10. So first, we're going to import some files. Interface to WEF10 and IERC20. We're going to need two functions, the function that we're going to call and the function that the WEF10 contract is going to call. To actually call the Flash Loan on WEF10 contract, we'll need to call this function called Flash Loan, passing in these parameters, which we will fill out later. When we call this function, WEF10 will call back into this on flash loan function. And at the end of this function call, we'll have to return bytes 33 called callback success. This callback success is just a kickback hash of this string. We don't have to worry about the details. I guess this is just how the flash loan works on WEF10. Let's now fill out the details. First, we will assign the address of the WEF contract on mainnet. I've also defined the event name log, and we'll use this to log some variables. And I've also created some state variables that we'll set when this function on flash loan is called. Okay, so let's now fill out the details for the function flash. Unlike the flash loan where you are only allowed to borrow the amount of tokens that exist, flash mint, you can create new tokens out of thin air and then use it in your transaction. And to show you this, we'll mint more tokens than the current supply of the token. So we'll get the current total supply by calling the function total supply. And the amount that we'll mint is the total supply plus one. We'll log the total supply. This will be helpful when we run the simulation on the main network. And then we'll approve the WEF contract to burn this amount of token that we're going to mint. For this example, the data that we're going to send is uh, empty bytes. But as usual, you can use ABI encode and decode to pass the data if you have any custom data that you want to pass. That completes the function flash. Let's now work on on flash loan. We're going to be writing some custom code inside here. So if you're performing an arbitrage, then you will write your code here. For this example, we'll keep it simple. We'll store some inputs into the state variable. Get the current balance of the token and then log the amount that we borrowed, the fee that we'll have to pay, and the current balance of the token. And that completes the function on flash loan. The demo will be simple. We call the function flash, and after the transaction, we log some state variables and the contract address, and then we print out the logs that were emitted. So I'm gonna start Ganache on the main network. And then we'll run the test in another terminal. The name of the file that we're testing is test with flash mint. The test passed and these are the state variables that were set. What's more interesting is here. The total supply before the flash mint was this much amount. The amount that we requested is this much amount. And this amount is one more than the total supply. So that's why you see a three here and a two over here. We had to pay zero fee. And during the flash mint, our balance of token was this much amount, which is equal to this amount you see over here. So that's flash mint. It took me a while to figure out how it was useful. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. See you later.